Hi, from San Francisco, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back. Happy to welcome to the program a uh, first time guest, but long time watcher of, uh, of course, not uh, of course everything Red Hat Summit, but also uh, it's been seeing what we're doing uh, on theCUBE. Uh, Lee Day is the Vice President of Marketing Communications at Red Hat. Uh, Lee, what, for those that don't know, tell everybody a little bit about uh, you know, your role at Red Hat and your involvement here at Summit. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, my team puts on a, the summit in, as a whole. We had many ancillary events like an, uh, an analyst day, we have numerous press interviews, and of course we're hosting these 5,500 people. All the creative elements you see are created by my team. We have an amazing in-house motion design team and design team, so really it's a huge team effort. Uh, it's a labor of love that we plan for an entire year to get ready for this awesome event. So. Yeah, so, so, so I want to step back for a second. It's been 12 years here at the show. Mm -hmm. Of course it's grown in size, it's grown in scope, but uh, you know, culturally and you know, community-wise, you know, what have you seen in, in the 12 years? Well, one thing that I'm really proud of is we've been able to maintain a sense of intimacy. It's really a tight-knit group of people. It's not a stale uh, conference where people are coming in and, and don't uh, really want to be here. There's a really good energy and we see a lot of alumni come back year after year, and it's really a really a great family dynamic. Okay, and, and one of the other things you've been heavily involved with the, the open source stories. Uh, we were we were honored to have on uh, you know the, the participants this year. Uh, we had uh, the, the the blogger uh, uh, Liz mm -hmm. and uh, the people from Beth Israel Deaconess. Talk to us a little bit about uh, the open source stories and and how that came about and and what what they are. Sure. So open source stories are really a passion project for my team. We do a lot of talking about technology and we sell a lot of products, but we thought the open source stories would be a, a wonderful way to humanize the technology and talk about how open source can have real societal impact beyond just technology. So we are proud to have launched just our, our third open source story and we're, we're working on more as part of the series. Yeah, so a lot going on here. It's always a balance. Red Hat always has a, finds a really good balance between community. So we saw a wedding yesterday, which was you know unprecedented, and then you know what Red Hat sort of the commercial company is doing. How do you, as as the event organizer, try and find that balance so that people can go find the parts of the show they like? Uh, you know, you can interact with customers as a commercial entity. How do you do that as a team? It's a it's a big balancing act. Uh, we obviously have a lot to showcase in terms of technology. We've got labs. We've got highly technical optimizing sessions, but we also want to show our soul. We want people to, to feel what it's like to be part of Red Hat, and uh, we, striking a balance is hard, but it's something the whole team puts a lot of care and effort into getting right. Yeah, just talk about the wedding a little bit. The wedding was, was crazy. <laughs> we heard about it the night before, but how did this all come about? We had our first wedding, yes. Uh, it's unprecedented. But I, I don't know if any tech conference has had a wedding, but uh, we had a, a great customer talk about how he was uh, bringing his fiance to San Francisco to. Get, to get married by the Justice of the Peace, and his sales rep suggested that he choose the summit instead as his, as his wedding venue. So we were obviously extremely thrilled to help out with that and, and organize what I think was a really sweet moment on our stage. All right. Um, can you share how things at the summit and the open source stories help get open source into the broader discussion uh, in the marketplace? Sure, I think open source has become much more mainstream than years past. All, all the major companies around tech companies and others are adopting and adapting toward open source. Companies like IKEA talk about open source methodologies. We have our open organization book, which is really about culture and designing organization in an open way for agile computing. So we've really seen over the years that open source is transcending technology into organizations, into culture, into arts, into healthcare. It's everywhere. Yeah. Do you, how, do, how, do people, how do people react to them? I mean, they're, they're powerful stories, they're emotional stories. How do they react to them, and, and do you even feel like you've got a need to, to include the technology, or is it really just about advancing ideas and advancing you know, big possibilities? Well, I think they can live separately. It's about advancing ideas in the case of the open source stories, although they do have a, a technical bent. So last year we uh, talked about Penn Manor, which is a student-led IT department uh, based on open source in Pennsylvania. And we also talked about Enable, which is uh, an organization that's making prosthetic limbs for children. And those are technology-based, but they are about participation and giving back. Yeah. How, do you, how do you continue? I mean, you've been at Red Hat for a very long time. You and I have known each other for a long time. 
how does Red Hat keep the culture of, of openness when you know there's there's competition, there's you know the, the world is moving so quickly? How do you continue to foster that, and then how do you continue to communicate that? Uh, you know, like like Jim told us this morning, it, it's always about open. It's open first. How do you how do you find that balance? You just have to really stick with your roots and 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 maintain that mission. Many people come to Red Hat because they really want to work for a mission-based company. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy to open source everything. It's not always easy to maintain this culture. Sometimes it's more complicated and things take a bit longer when you're more collaborative with people and more inclusive. But in the end, it's, it's a better outcome for all. How do you, we, we get a chance to go to a lot of, a lot of events. Um, we had a great partnership with Red Hat. We really appreciate you having us out here. How do you think about the next year? Because people want it to be bigger. Oh they want it to be bigger. I mean, <laughs> we obviously already you're, you're already about planning about Boston, <laughs> but, but as an event organizer, how do you keep coming up with big ideas? It's a challenge. This year, one of my favorite elements was the orchestra that did an original score for our, our opening animated video. And so as we think about the next year, the first thing we do is work with a team to come up with interesting design themes and work with our content people to come up with the narrative about what the event is about. And then from that, the whole event unfolds and gets planned. So we're thinking about it now. We've already been on site visits in Boston. We're looking forward to May next year. Yeah, great. Yeah. Right Are the there any, uh, any kind of the collaborations with the community uh, that feed into both the events and, and the open source stories that you can share? Absolutely. Yeah. We're all about communities. Uh, we like to showcase our communities, bring them together, give them a place to talk to, talk to everyone. Uh, we have Community Central here at the summit. Um, just so many different communities, hundreds of and they, they're all important to us, and they're a part of our DNA. So having a place for them to talk, sessions and so forth is important. And then all the open source stories are really based on little communities. So Liz and the Liz Army is a little community about people that want to share information about brain cancer. Same with Stephen Keating and the community he's developed uh, to diagnose his, his brain tumor. So highlighting these communities, showing how you know, the power participation is real, uh, is what we aim to do here. Yeah, I, I, you've, got a, you've got a son. Um, we saw, you know, we were talking about going to, going to Mars. We were talking to J, JPL. Yeah, that was cool, wasn't do you, it? Do you take the stories back and go, look, that's, what, that's the yeah. things that mom helps make. Exactly, that, that makes it much more tangible. Yeah. It's really hard for him to understand what yeah, I do. Yeah, what you do, <laughs> sure. But to, to show actual videos and how we're running stock exchanges and how interesting things like the Mars rover are using open source technology right. and that open source is solving major issues makes it a little bit more tangible. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. that's cool. It's not just ones and zeros. That's right, that's right. Like, could, could you give us a little bit of insight, kind of the cast of thousands putting this on, you know, uh, the, the, the event like this has so many moving pieces. Yes. What, what happens behind the scenes? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's definitely an interesting thing. Our team is not as big as it should be to put on an event like this, so we use the word enrollment. We have <laughs> uh, tons of people all over the, the company that help us with this. Uh, tons of ideas are brought in. They might not be from the marketing team. They could be from anywhere in the company. And that's another piece of Red Hat's culture that's very important for us to maintain the best ideas come from anywhere. Uh, we choose uh, sessions, we choose like from over 600 submissions, we have a call for papers that are then chosen by very large committees. Uh, nothing is done in a vacuum or in isolation, so it really is a whole year in planning with lots of, of people, customer facing people, engineers, marketing people, sales, finance, it's just, it takes a village. Yeah. yeah. Are, are there any kind of cool little pieces inside the show that somebody on the outside might not have seen that you'd want to share with the community? Many features. Uh, so we have uh, a creative corner upstairs on the third floor. I think we do have a, really a creative bent to our brand, and so we, wanna, we want people to participate in that. Another thing we have uh, this year is Participation Square. So we have people uh, asking our customers and attendees about their preferences on user experience, about redhat.com navigation, and all that. Because we really do want our customers and our participants to help us make our products and our website and the whole Red Hat experience better. Yeah. What's the, what's the takeaway you want people to, to sort of walk away this week from what Red Hat's doing, what their purpose is, what their mission is? What, you know, that, what's that sort of tagline you want them to really take away from this week? I would like for people to have the takeaway that we are really a strategic partner whether they're a customer or a technology vendor, that, that we've got a lot to offer and that we really do want to work with people to advance their environments and, and you know, innovate. All right, well, Lee, really appreciate you sharing this. Uh, congratulations to you and your team for a successful event and uh, thank you for the partnership and, and bringing the cube here. Thank you. Again. All right, we'll be back here with lots more coverage of Red Hat Summit 2016. You're watching the cube.